This is a quick demonstration of how easy it is to use EMC Viper's controller with OpenStack to act as a Cinder provider for all EMC and frankly non-EMC storage. So I've logged into the Viper controller. You can see here that we've got all of the various uh, Cinder configuration uh, files. Uh, if we go and we take a look at the uh, Cinder uh, configuration uh, text file, you can see that we're using one particular config file here, which is a uh, volume driver for Viper and the EMC config driver. If we take a look at that one, you can see that uh, we've got a various set of uh, underlying virtual arrays. Here we can plug in into Cinder via iSCSI. Uh, we could also, in theory, use this also to plug in via NFS uh, in the latest uh, OpenStack builds. So if we log in to the Viper controller, what we're going to see is we're going to see the underlying uh, 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 pools of storage, the virtual storage arrays, the physical assets. Here we've got some underlying storage arrays. Uh, some legacy clarion, some uh, symmetrics. We've created a virtual array out of that, um, and we've got some virtual pools of storage that we're using for file shares and for high performance and for archiving. When we log into OpenStack, we'll see what this looks like from that perspective. OpenStack is a great automation tool set uh, for all sorts of underlying hypervisors, all sorts of underlying storage. Here you can see the volume pools that are uh, reporting up through Viper. Um, and as I go in and I say, uh, I've got an existing volume, I want to create a new volume. Uh, we're going to create one for VMworld. Um, and uh, we're going to use one of the Viper uh, pool types that are reporting themselves up. We're going to specify that I want a 5 gig uh, pool that I'm going to run uh, um, uh, OpenStack compute instances in. And uh, now it's going off and it's saying, hey, I'm going off and provisioning. Now. Uh, again, highlighting how simple and how integrated this is without doing anything else. When we go in and we look at the underlying resources that Viper is manifesting in that pool, it said, hey, I just created something inside that iSCSI pool. It's being created. It's being created in a pool uh, of underlying storage that's abstracted, and it's going off and it's finishing the provisioning. Now, again, think about how simple and easy this is, and it's important to highlight that Viper will do this for all types of storage arrays, not just EMC. Um, so uh, for any array who integrates from the bottom up, which is pretty cool. And do it not just for OpenStack, but also for the vCloud Automation Center. Now, the other thing that we can do with Viper that relates to OpenStack is provide some data services. So uh, the Viper data services, which again, here, uh, it's running on top of uh, EMC and NetApp storage. It could run on all sorts of different types of storage models. Um, we've got some pools that we've created we can create additional capabilities that those platforms don't deliver via additional data services. Here what we're going to do is we're going to create some Swift object storage. Swift is the object storage standard um, which is used inside OpenStack. So here we're going to uh, pick an underlying storage subsystem to deliver the capacity for it. Um, it's going to be delivered on uh, uh, one of the pools that we've created. We're going to uh, um, do some uh, additional creation of a data store. In this case, it's a data store name. We're going to need to get an object tag that we're going to use for that. Um, but again, super uh, simple to add additional capabilities. And one thing that's very cool about this is that this is compliant with the S3 APIs for AWS object storage, Atmos for EMC style object storage, and also uh, with Swift, which is the OpenStack storage. But not only does it deliver the existing standard, it actually does a superset. So certain things that are not in um, those standards that are useful, like uh, being able to do byte offset um, uh, writes, for example, in Swift is pretty handy dandy. So this is the store uh, object key. And uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to log in. Um, and we're going to say, uh, in this particular case, we'll take a look at um, the various Swift store container information that's being used for um, uh, these objects. Uh, part of them is not only to store objects in for, for all th sort of use, but also as a glance catalog uh, for uh, virtual machine types, for example. So if you go and you take a look, we're changing the parameters so that we can log in with the username uh, that we created um, and uh, the credentials that are necessary, the necessary pool, and then we're going to get the object store key that refers to that uh, Swift object pool and put it into that Swiss, Swift store key. 
and then uh, we can then uh, access that object store directly. Um, so again, really cool capability, and uh, it's important to understand how Viper adds that data services capability on top of existing storage subsystems like we've seen here, um, but also for all sorts of uh, storage models, including commodity off-the-shelf hardware.